Ready to go? Okay. Okay. We'll go to the cut sheets. And it just gives you a little rundown on here. Of, it gives you your ice specifications on the inside, first page, inside page. And our model numbers, it gives all of our, all of our units up top, all the different models. And how to determine your model number, sizes. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time. You can see C and HK, that's full cube and half cube. All right, so the K is gone. We're no longer using that. All right, um, kind of went over our history. Okay, we have a large cube if you look on to the right. All right, it's got kind of a rounded top. Yes. That is a Chinese unit that we sell. That's our, it's a, called the KD50. 70 or 110 units, okay? I don't get, I get very few calls on them. They're out there, we offer it. It's another under counter, small cube unit, okay? It's, it says large cube, it's not gonna be anywhere close to what our cube is, but you will see some of that stuff. I can walk you through if you have questions, but it's a lot of push button right on the controller display on there that gets through. Um, Again, 1955 is when we started making ice cubes. So you're going to see a lot. Um, we have, I know we have, I just saw this, and I, I get surprised where these machines are every once in a while. And the bartending school in New York, their top bartending school, they have, ice, they have cold drafts there. They, just, I, they did a service call. Arctic Glacier in New York, who's our biggest customer, um, they lease the last count they were over 3,000 machines in the city. I'm going there tomorrow night to do a class. So I tried to get these together. So got a class there at five o'clock tomorrow night. But they, you walk into that building and my first thought was, this is cold draft east. It, that's all you saw was cold draft. <laughs> New ones, they've got a test line, they've got a, their spare parts is just about as big as ours. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Quite an operation, but and they lease ice, they guarantee ice. You know, they're they have make they have machines right there that are making cold draft ice cubes full time. So if they got somebody down and they need to get them ice, they just grab it and go. So it's a pretty cool operation. But I didn't realize. I thought they. I knew they were our biggest customer. I thought they did a lot more other stuff, but they don't do much other than cold draft in the city. That's how they make a living. <laughs> so it's a good thing. Yeah. All right, our GB 1060. That's our. That's the workhorse. It's a thousand pounder. Okay, you're going to get probably about 950, 950, maybe a little less. That goes on a 950 bin or a 600 bin. You can do either one, but usually they go on a 950 bin. Um, it gives you all your connections, exterior finish, refrigeration. What we're using 404A. It'll give you your clearances. Okay, we really want to, these to be these clearances to be at least what we have here. A little more would be even better. Uh, make sure we get some air going through and we can work around the machine. All right, so air cooled, all the dimensions are same. Gonna be a little bit bigger of a machine, heavier wise, but temps, all, everything for each one of these units is gonna be roughly the same thing, okay? We try to keep it, we don't want this one running at this time, you know, this temperature, this one running. Everything's the same. All the components are the same. We've just, you know, shrunk down our refrigerants and size-wise of the unit. If this goes the 1064, if this, if we remote this unit, all right, it's going to have to have a 314 remote condenser. That's a three-pass. All right, refrigerant going through that condenser is going to go through three times instead of two. And uh, the smaller units will use the 214. All right. And then we go to our GB5, and a GB5 is half of a GB10. All right, it's got everything on the bottom is the same. And then we, the GB10, we added another um, water plate EVAP, and it <coughs> runs alongside that bottom one. So when you go to the GB5, it's going to look exactly the same. You're just going to, if you were used to GB10s, just block out the top. Everything's the same underneath. All right. And those will give you roughly. 500 pounds a day, get 500 pounds of ice. 
those are the machines where I would, instead of using two 1064s, I would try to get them to do two of the GB 560s. Same size, if you use two, you've always got ice. If you have a slow season, shut one off. You don't have to make a thousand pounds a day. The thousand pounders, they gotta both be running at the same time, you're gonna get all that ice. So winter rolls around and you know you're gonna have a couple months of slow season around here, mm -hmm. shut one off and you still got ice. If you needed to borrow a part from that machine to go to that one, you know, to keep one of them yeah. running, you could do that as well. So there's a lot of advantages for that. Um, room temperatures, everything else, everything is the same. And then from here, when we remote that, we go down to the 214, the two-pass remote condenser. The GT560, again, air liquid remote. We can do all, we can do all three. That gets the 214 as well. Um, it'll give you your weights, air cooled, liquid cooled, how much ice you should be getting, you know, per per cycle. Um, water cooled, how much water you're using in a 24 hour period, it'll give you all that. GT3, now we've gone down even smaller. The GT5 is the 40, the GB10 and the GB5 are 42 inches wide, and then the GT3s and the GT5s and the GT3s, they shrink to 30. So you can only use the smaller bins on those, two, four, and that's it. Usually they get a 400 pound bin underneath them. GT is tall, GB is gonna be your wide one, your bigger one, wide, so, but just two sizes. Um, and the GT3 we cannot remote, we don't remote that one. So that's just air and liquid. And all the models come in with the X series, the GTX that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. with the plastic, you can see in the pictures, it has yeah. the plastic top and the plastic vents and the little display on there. But they all come in that as well. Full cube and half cube. Gives all your plumbing for your hookups on each one of these units. Uh, clearances, four inches, eight inches, six inches. They're going to be pretty standard, pretty close, air cooled units that are, you know, but they may be a little bit different, but most of the time they're about the same. I two here? What the heck is going on? There we go. Um, the HD dispensers. We, these are our hotel dispensers. Okay, you guys, I don't know, do you guys do a lot of hotel work or? We have a few. Do you have, well, you're not gonna, these are relatively new in the last year. We did one for a long time and it had a water option and did different stuff and then we totally revamped it. They wanted a new one. We sell uh, Max Ice is our sister company in Florida. That's there from China. Those are Chinese machines. Max Ice, they sell those out of Florida. Um, they sell lots of them because they're cheap. So, but the dispenser, if you come across it with a Max Ice unit on it, you can call Cold Draft for help on it. But that, you know, ultimately, that's it's a Max Ice unit that it's on. We don't have, we haven't sold very many Cold Draft dispensers. We have just started to get back into it. So, and a lot of those you got to get them when you're, you know, ground floor, get them in right away. So that's something they change over too often. But you will see those out there, and those are the MID 200s. Those are the Max Ice ones, and the HD 200s are the Cold Draft ones. So if you see it, that's the only difference. Our, our Crusher, okay, if you ever come across, and these can go on the GB5s and the GB10s. They go with those two units only, not the two smaller ones, the GT units. All right, and again, Dividing in the bin, make sure that's known up front. You can move it in the field, but then you gotta put screws into the plastic lining and cover up your other ones, and it's a lot easier to do it when right from the factory. These come in 110 and 220 volt, 220 volt units. All right, 208, 230. These much, the voltages must match the ice machine. All right, so if you got 1064, it's a 200, 208 volt unit. You gotta have a T284, which is a 208 volt unit of the crusher. Okay, you don't wanna go 110, you don't wanna mix. All right, but we can do, we can do either one. 
I don't have a lot on the Crusher. It's just been redesigned. This is one of the main reasons I'm going to New York. I sent them, I was out, I stopped out there, I did a class and I stopped in just to check in with them a couple months ago. And we started talking about Crushers and they said, we're not selling them, we're not offering them, we're pushing them away, they've been too much of a problem. So I understand that. They were, trust me, they were a pain in my butt too. So. We've just redesigned it. I said, give me one chance. I'll send you a unit and we can you can run it for a couple weeks. They've had it a couple weeks now. I said, now I'll come out and I'll do a class on everything and we'll go from there. I said, fair enough. So we'll see when I get there tomorrow night how they like it. <laughs> First impressions, they liked it. They liked what we've done to it. So but it's a it's a good seller. I mean it's if you want that mix of cubed and crushed, mm -hmm. it's a it's a great machine. I mean, and it will seriously crush some ice. So hopefully we've got it we've got it right now. And but it it needed some work. So we'll see. Like I said, I'll find out tomorrow exactly what the pros and cons. The cocktail series. Those are the large cubes that were in there with the rounded top. Okay, the 50, 70, 110. Those are the sizes they come in. 50 pounds, 70 pounds, 110. Dimensions are all a little different. Um, we're going to pull air and blow it out the front and the side on those. So they're only air-cooled units, and I don't have a lot of other information on those. But it, you can see the cube size. Inch and a quarter long, but it's an inch everywhere else. Our big cube is an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter square. So you, will, you may run into those. We are selling a lot of those in Canada for some reason. Our self-contained unit, this is the one you're going to be more apt to run into, especially with these places that are just using it for their high-end cocktails. It's a 200-pound unit. It's 110 air-cooled unit only. It's the only way we sell it right now. You, we have a 50 cycle we sell overseas, but 110 in the States. Um, again, those vents got to be cleaned. Um, you take that lower panel off where the vents are, there's two screws on the bottom, pop that off, serial number is going to be on the inside left wall. On the right hand side, and then you're going to have your fan, condenser, small, small condenser. Right hand side, you're going to have your control board, water valve, dump valve, everything's accessible through the front. All right? And it's the only thing, this being an under counter unit, you may have to get to the top, so they may have to be pulled off and the top taken off. REVAP probes, all that kind of stuff, but again, hopefully those are going to go away soon, yeah. so we wouldn't have to do that. Um, really good unit, the thing, we've had a, it's been out now about two years since we put the first one out, maybe even a little bit longer than that now, and they've been received really well, so you're, you're you know, you're apt to see this shoved under a bar somewhere in those high-end cocktails. Our ice bins, again, 230s, we try not to use 400s, 650s, and 950s. So just depending on what their, what their capacity they're looking for, you know, you don't want to oversize them, undersize them, it's trying to get it just right. So, but those are all made in-house, we build those, except for the 400, that one comes from China. Uh, they can make that cheap, that one cheaper ship it to us, which is mind-boggling, but I was in the break rotor business for 10 years and that's why they closed, because China could make them over there and ship them cheaper than we could do it, so greedy people. <laughs> All about the dollar. Absolutely. So I think that's it on those. I don't want to bore you to death with every machine and dimension, and so we are going to Take a look at that. If you have any questions on it, the big thing is it's there. It's information you have if you need to go to it. On the back of here is my card. Okay, it's got my my cell and my office number. All right, office number is also on the front of this. I sent this to Dan. You guys may already have one of these. I was hoping you would. I wanted him to do that. So yours is in your mailbox. Absolutely. So, but I use we used to do the classes off the manuals and. You know, the manual's that thick, and most of the time after the class it went, 
someplace never to be seen again. So I came up with this and I'm hoping that this will, and we'll teach right off of this because this is the stuff that you're going to use every day when you walk up to the ice machine. Okay. The only thing I would have done differently, I'd move the clean mode to the top of the sequence because I would like to have, when, when you go on to a cold draft ice machine, I always like just put it in clean. If the machine's off, if it's making ice, obviously let it run. You know, do what it's doing and watch it. But when you go there and the machine's off, which it usually is when you get there for a service call, just flip it to clean. I don't care about compressor and fan or water cooled, whatever. I, we can leave that side of it down right now. The important part, put it in clean. Let's get the water plate going up. Let's see if we have any leaks. First thing, look in the drain pan as soon as it is it filling with water. Those are the things in the sequence here. You turn it on, the plate or plates will is should pretty almost immediately rise right up. Okay, so your water plate's gonna go up. And again, we'll see this down here. Water plate up, water will start to fill in the, into the water fill tube on the front. Make sure we got water in there. Make sure the pump starts. Okay. And when the flow, when as that tube's filling in the front, which is this float here, all right, this is going to be, all oh, this will be gone, but you're going to be looking at this in the front. These little dots should both be at the bottom, all right, and then as you can see, this one, see that little lip right there? When you're adjusting these, don't pull because these are shot now. They've been pulled up by the wire, okay? That needs to go back in there. Just grab them here. If they're tight, you can move them up and down. This is your water fill, and this is your harvest. Okay, so just grab the blue stick, and you can raise it up and down. The best spot where I tell everybody is you're going to put the one on the left. If you walk up to it and you're not sure somebody screwed them up, this one's way up here. You know it's not right. Something's going on. Put the one on the left at an inch and an eighth, a blue stick sticking out the top, and the one on the right about an inch. All right, if you start it there, it'll tell you that in the instructions. Actually, it says seven eighths in the instruction, but I bumped it up to get a little better cube first. So, this is where you're going to set them when you get a new setup like this. And it's going to tell you inch and an eighth and an inch. That's going to be really close to the cube that you want. All right. If we pull and we separate this, it's going to be junk. It's not going to read. Okay. So once these are set like that, you should see your black dots are going to be on the bottom. Those are the magnets in here. All right. Once that plate rises up and it starts to fill, this is all one tube. We morphed them. We morphed them together. We started out with one float, single tube, just like this, except we had both floats on one. So when you adjusted one and the other, and then we separated them. So you can adjust separate if you want. The reason we did that is because the harvest, once you have that set, you shouldn't have to move that one ever again. Set it in an inch and eighth and never worry about it. But if somebody messes with it, you got to know where to go back to. All right, and then this is going to be your water fill. Alright, so as this fills up with water, it's going to fill up evenly. Once that one lifts up, you're going to get a low water light on the control board. That low water light's going to stay on the whole cycle. Okay, all per perfect cube cycle, 25 to 28 minutes, right in that area. Alright, so as that fills up, you get a low water light. And then when this one reaches and it hits the blue ring above it, this is your water fill, you're going to get a high water light. And it's just going to flash for a second because then you're going to get water flow from your pump. That tells Once that high water light comes on, that tells the pump, we got water, I'm ready to go. You're not, we're not going to burn you up. So we got water in there. High water light comes on, your pump will start running, and what you'll see here is a stream of water flowing in here. All right, and that will tell you your pump's running. And then it circulates back through the system. Dang. Mm -hmm. And that's how we shoot water up there. So once that hits and that pump comes on, we've sucked that water out of here. So then this is going to drop a little bit. The high water light is going to shut off because it's not activated anymore. 
and then it's going to refill back to that point and you'll get another high water light. Now as we're making ice, again this one's going to stay on through the whole cycle, as we're making ice this one will slowly drop. Once it drops the high water light will go off, but that's normal. All right, and then it'll run that way, and it'll, as we're pumping water up, pumping water up, pumping water up, this slowly goes down. When this one drops down, we're out of water, that sends it into harvest. It'll tell you that on the control board. Make ice, harvest, it'll tell you exactly what's going on. So that's a big one with these floats, was separating those so you can just move here. If you get on there and you can shove your pinky in the, into the ice cube, that's why I said look at the, always look at the ice cube. It's going to tell you what you know what it's what it's doing. If it's short on water, too much water, you can shove your pinky in that hole. Best thing to do is once the plate opens up, look up in there. You can see it. You you can tell if it's too big, not big enough, whatever, and then you'll just adjust this accordingly. And you just to add water, you just pull it up a little bit, take water away. We don't have a dimple, push it down a little. Inch and an eighth and an inch, those are your big ones on that. Again, it's only going to start your pump when you get that high water light. We have a lot of people that come in and they go, I got, where was I going? Totally lost my train of thought. When that high water light, they'll say, I don't have. I don't have a water, or my pump's not running. And they're going back and they're checking the power supply. I'll show you where those things are, and they're checking everything. And then first thing you got to look at is, do I get a high water light? If you don't get a high water light, that pump's not going to have power. We're not going to give it anything because we don't want to run it dry. So check that first. Water pump's not running. You get a high water light. If you don't have a high water light, that float is more than likely faulty. And what happens when you see that is this will fill completely up with water. It starts coming around the sides because it's not reading high to shut off here, so it just keeps on going. And then the water weight will fill in that tank and it'll drop it right up. So very important to get that high water light for the pumps. So when you're in the clean mode, everything is, that's why when I say flip it into clean first, mm -hmm. make sure all that stuff's happening. You can check we shouldn't have any water in that drain pan during the freeze cycle. We shouldn't have any water in there. All right, so no drips. You're gonna you'll have water dumping in at the end of the cycle. It's getting rid of the extra water, but during the freeze cycle we shouldn't have any drips. I'll show you one of the common causes when not putting that bin probe in, and where that tank cracks on the back side of it, it'll push that ice pushes up and it's trying to open. Something's got to give, and that's usually when things start to break. Um, yeah, check your sequence of operation and clean first. That's that's the big one. Um, bum, 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 bum. When that pump is running, you're going to see stream of water flowing here. There's a little, see that little divider right here? Yes. All right. As we, it's going to run. We want this stream of water landing about right in the center of that black hole. All right, okay. that can, is controlled by this little screw right here. Again, shouldn't have to move it. If something, if you get a calcium buildup in there, yeah. it could plug that hole up and not allow water to run through there at all. All right, so, or somebody may have choked it off. But you can take this screw out. You see there's silicone around it, right on the side here. All right, we, when we put that in, we put a glob of silicone on. We don't know exactly where that's at. The girl making the water plate so isn't sure where that is going to be set at. So she runs it in. We, we silicone that. So if we ever have a problem with there's no water running here, and we turn this and, you know, what's going on? We don't have a stream of water. Well, it's probably plugged up. So you can take that out, clean it off with a wire brush, clean the hole off a little bit with a wire brush, just clean it up. And then make sure when you do this, you have a bucket of water, bucket or something. Don't stand right in front of it or where that water goes. Because when you turn the machine on, once that's cleared, it's going to shoot directly at you. All right, it's going to be you're going to be looking at it here, and it's coming through. But if you do that, just try to count where you see the stream where you have it is good. Say that's dripping water. This needs re 
recocked. So you have to pull that out, put a dab of silicone on it, drive it back in, let it sit, whatever the tube says, make sure it dries, and then you can adjust it to get that stream of water right in the center of that hole. And then as these cubes build the pressure, no place for the water to go, this is going to slowly, right at the end of the cycle, go over that dam. It's going to increase that water flow and it's going to push that right over the dam. And that's what's going to run that float out of water. Because now it's going down the drain on this side. That float's going to run out of water. The last 10 to 15 seconds of the cycle is the only time it should go over that water dam. All right, if you're going over at the beginning of the cycle, well, we're not going to make a cube because that water's going down the drain. All right, so the last 10 to 15 seconds goes down, flushes the float, float goes down, the low side says, I'm done, we're full, cubes are good to go, and we're out of water. So, and again, we'll see that when we get down there. To check a float, say it's not going into harvest, it's not going in, uh, we're not getting a high water light. If you're checking those floats, the only way to check those floats is to do a continuity check on them. All right, that's, that's it. So, and they are compatible with our old boards. Sometimes I've had instances where they get a new float and then it doesn't read it on the board. That's not a float issue. If the float's checking good in continuity, you're raising it, put your meter, you know, testers on there and you're raising it up and down. If that checks good, usually we're going to go to a control board. The EVAP probe that we had talked about, hopefully going to be going away soon. If you need to ohm that out, the big thing to look for with the EVAP probe is what's going to tell you something's the matter with it. When that plate drops down to go into harvest, Usually what will happen, they'll stay down for 30 seconds, 10 seconds, opens up and goes, closes right back up. And if the ice hasn't moved, it's not going to feel that there's any resistance there because usually if there's an ice cube in between it or something, mm -hmm. it'll open back up. It'll catch it and go right back up and start making ice. And then they'll go, well, I, my production is double slow because now we're trying to make ice on top of ice. And when I get it, then the, when the ice does come out, it's got huge holes in it. But the water, everything looks good because we started shooting more water up into those cubes that are already done. And time out.